So another part to this whole uh, strategy is just layering uh, cash value, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Infinite banking system using, uh, I use uh, livingwealth.com. But um, yeah, like as long as you got a great insurance company and they allow you some really great terms, um, the whole idea of the, um, you know, infinite banking system is that you're able to uh, <clears throat> basically create infinite uh, banking infinite loans because you're tapping into the cash value policy um, death benefit and that death benefit if you were to take a loan uh, you won't have to pay any of the loans back because it would be paid back by the death benefit and this this loan is coming from the pool the cash value the you know if you imagine that the insurance company has a pot of money that everybody's money goes into and then um, yours is set aside separate. You know, obviously it's not like this, but you, know, you got your money going into your account and it's uh, growing like the, the schedule is saying, but then you want to take a loan. The loan doesn't come from your money. And obviously these are all derivatives. These are all contracts, but it's not coming from your money. It's coming from the fund of the insurance company. And that loan comes out from there and not your money. And your money is growing as if it's all there. And it's a little bit of a mind trick, and you know some might say that's not good, but I say that's really good because I want my, all my money to be working, and it's it's all working when it's you know when I'm using a loan against it, it's still growing as if it's all there, and I'm also using part of it at the same time. And if I decide I don't want to pay it back, I don't have to. You know those two conditions, like I think one you have to get the PUA writer juiced up enough to where uh, the POA writer can fall off and you don't have to worry about uh, not paying any premium or you know you have to um, keep on paying premium uh, in order for uh, <clears throat> to not pay the loan back so I know there's like a couple conditions and how it works but at the same time it's still not bad like for, for being able to use the growth uh, and putting away money at the same time and how this would work for an investment strategy is where on the fragility window is good for deployment deploying uh, deploying the cash value so the idea would be your whole goal during the green period is to build cash value the whole goal is to just build and build as much cash value as possible during the green zone and you could get a loan from you know the, the stocks or you know certain uh, amount alone and the idea is to get access to this really good cash really good credit and leverage and you're doing it during the green zone you have nothing to worry about because we're in the green zone and it's not a fr fragile time and uh, getting a cheap loan during then is really good and your whole goal is just to build these policies for the rainy day and what you want to do is do the opposite of what normal people would do whenever the market's going up they chase after it they put more money in the market what you want to do is that instead of chasing after the market, you want to start building policies. So then when we hit the fragile zone, we come to the lows, and that's when it really matters. You're going to be ready when we hit the fragility window, and you're going to be hit getting these really good prices that is going to be almost impossible for the common man to really think that we're going to go to that level. They're not thinking that, oh, we're in a fragility window, we're going to be in a time where people are going to be you know forced to sell their liquidate their assets and for for us to go down in price so low and uh, that, that's kind of just what we're betting on we're, we're really preying on and preparing ourselves for for those times where people are just so fragile and so unprepared that we'll be prepared we'll have cash value ready to deploy uh, at a moment's notice and the idea is we would do a flex kind of thing where um during the um, the fragility window, we're of course going to deploy the uh, the infinite banking system and buying at the lows, and um, the the loan from uh, to make those uh, policies uh, will be working to pay pay that or fill it up back up. You know, the whole idea is just to fill it back up, and then once we hit the green zone again, uh, we start making more policies, and then. That, uh, that money that got used to deploy in the market, we could start loaning it out and creating more policies. So it feeds on each other. Now this system actually feeds on each other to where um, 
the uh, the money used um, from the for for buying assets could be used to leverage a loan and if there happens to be uh, any margin call we could definitely take care of it the whole idea is to build a whole bunch of policies by year five and then be done by year six and then uh, start paying back those uh, those loans uh, on from the stocks and then you'll be left with the policies and uh, obviously like we hit year six and hopefully the PUA rider fell off to where it could it could sustain itself it doesn't need any more premium and that's the whole idea. And then now uh, we'll wait for you know two and ten year inversion, and then we'll get ready. Maybe we'll we'll start keep on working. We'll we'll really juice up those policies to make sure they're really full and ready to deploy. And then once we hit that bottom or that scare or that uh, you know recession or that crash, you're ready to deploy the uh, the the money at whatever way you want to do it, you know, and uh, one through two third kind of uh, ladder, you know, deployment, or just all at once, you know, depending on how good you get. But that's kind of just the next part of this is just layering over an insurance policy and just making it um, the, the, the method, a mechanism to just really create a whole bunch of leverage. Not only is it growing in the life insurance policy at 6%, we're growing uh, exponentially just uh, leveraging loans to one another, whether it's getting loans from the policies to, um, you know, buy more stock or pay off the debt from the, the stock market or uh, using the, the money made from the stock market to pay uh, for more policies. But, um, you know, all in all, um, if you create more policies, you're going to be able to have leverage more um, <clears throat> cash to deploy at the bottoms. And, the more cash to deploy at the bottoms will ultimately create more wealth once we get higher and higher. So the whole system is self-sustaining just because the more higher we get those um, those assets and we make it to evergreen zone, the more um, asset value they will be. And obviously that's assuming that um, we keep on going higher and higher uh, in the markets, which is not guaranteed. But at the same time, like, it's a uh, it's not a bad strategy when it comes to building policies, and um, you know if you don't want, if you're worried about not being able to uh, make it or if you're the the whole the speed of it uh, and the amount of it and becoming over leveraged with making policies you know that's something that you need to really factor in what is your ability to be able to support you know obviously you want to make as many as possible because this infinite banking system is awesome because. It can it makes money uh, and then you're able to if you take take a loan out you're able to get that money back within four to five years so it's just an amazing system and you're able to deploy it in the market at the same time and compound it in two different places uh, for the full amount like almost uh, so it's um, over time it almost becomes dollar for dollar like what in, inside the policy system you know how much it's growing and outside the policy system and how much it's growing so that's just the overall idea of the strategy. Um, for part two and something I want to deploy hopefully within you know the, the next 10 five years